Now, buddy, I love talking about the beautiful Concord on the channel. Obviously, a British engineering marvel being able to fly at twice the speed of sound. Now, yes, obviously, the whole project of supersonic passenger flight kind of failed. Airlines were never able to actually make money with this airplane. And we have a, a track just crashed into our engineering marvel. Obviously, the four strong engines that would be able to push this airplane to such speeds consume a lot of fuel. Airplane tickets were immensely expensive. This plane was just extremely economical and i think it's also because of its size it's actually well quite small if you see it in real life especially the cabin is quite small the windows are the size of a hand if you're above six three you can't stand up in the concord it only has a two by two seating arrangement it can only carry 100 passengers which is about as much as a crj 1000 now it is true this airplane doesn't appear very small take a look at the size comparison to the 737 it's definitely longer in fact it is as long as a 747 200 this is not small at all but it has a very economical design you know what i mean by that is half of this airplane isn't cabin obviously we have the big snooter here which we can deploy before takeoff and before landing in order to be able to lower the plane's pitch while landing and taking off and of course we have this very pointy aft section of the fuselage the tail section right here obviously in order for a plane to fly over the speed of sound it has to be very pointy as it's, it's very much like that also with a delta wing but i wondered everybody could we make a concord that's twice as big as this one so it could carry twice as much passengers and maybe it would make twice the month month yeah, this is going to be a very great demonstration. Let's take a look. Yes, everybody. I have once again deployed my genius. My immense genius. This is a very big airplane now. So, I mean, we haven't really changed the problem of this airplane's design. It looks very big for some reason. It just stands very tall. It has a very high ground clearance to the point where you'd need very special jet bridges from probably the A380 to properly board it. And also the fuselage itself isn't very girthy at all. It's just long. It's not girthy. In fact, you know, the A320 right here doesn't look a lot wider of a cabin at all. Kind of similar. Yes, everybody, look at this. This is the Boeing 747-100, the smallest 747 ever made, to be fair, standing next to our new Concorde double size. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, now finally you could actually call the Concorde a wide-body aircraft. And here's... And here, for some reason, there's a Concorde loaded onto our 747. You can see, yes, this plane is now twice the size. I really do wonder, does this plane fly? Now, let's talk about what I, you know, made here to build this add-on. I practically doubled all the value. I doubled the weight. I doubled all the sizes of the flight controls, of everything, even in the cockpit. And of course, I've doubled engine power. That's something that doesn't always make sense. Luckily, I don't have to develop a own flight model for this thing. But as you may know, the drag of this airplane and this is going to be our big problem quadruples as the size doubles so i really do wonder could we make an airplane like this that could even fly to mach 2 with a double the engine size let's take a look now we can start off i guess let's put the reversers out let's reverse out of here that's got to work already. Now, as you can see, the texturing isn't the best at all. And I managed to break this cockpit, which is now twice the size as well. Everything's now twice the size. And it kind of works. I don't know. There, uh, I think I broke something here. Also, this is a bit broken. We cannot use the engineering panel. Um, but at least the plane works. So this is just... Can't, you know what? This is just a demonstrator aircraft. Could this airplane fly at all? Now, let's go ahead and prepare some, some flying here. Let's put the... There we go. Yes, the snoot drew down, and it does that beautifully. Uh-oh, taxi into grass. I think this airplane now is so big that we genuinely need quite a lot of airport restrictions. I mean, just this taxiway. This plane doesn't fit on it at all. I kind of forgot now that we've kind of built the longest airplane that exists. I mean, the Antonov N225 is 84 meters long. This plane now is uh, 124 meters long. Um, it is immensely huge. Maybe I should have sized the airplane up to 150%. Not sure. Now, I think the reality is that if this airplane does fly well, and you could somewhat engineer it, then it would maybe save the whole concept of the Concorde. I think now that we've doubled the size of these Olympus engines, we've made them a lot more economical. Also, why is the vertical state... That vertical stabilizer is not properly... 
Uh, yes, the bigger an engine gets, the more economical it gets. This is why modern airplanes have bigger fan engines. So we've made this airplane more fuel efficient. Also, we can now load in more fuel so we could actually have it travel in further distances. Yeah, honestly, the range of the Concorde was never amazing. It could only fly 4,140 miles, whereas the 747 could fly double that. All right, come on, let's go full power. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So yeah, we've got very powerful engines now. Once again, everything is properly set. Everything is well. Yes, look at those afterburners coming on beautifully. Now, we don't even use much of that runway, but we've got way of a bigger wing now as well. So this airplane actually flies quite good. It is now a whole lot bigger, which always has the interesting effect that planes look a whole lot, you know, slower. Simply because the picture is so much bigger. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I think I've done a problem with modeling. As you can see, the, the doors here can't really be put out, but uh, all right, the flight model ignores that. So we're still able to see how fast the airplane goes. Anyway, let's go ahead and put that snoot troop up. Perfect, just like that. And we can already reach some proper speeds. We're already at 0.7 of a Mach, 470 knots of indicated airspeed, despite our weight being immense right now. Yes, that's quite significant. We've got so much fuel on board now. I mean, okay, the Antonov can carry almost double this, but this is impressive. This airplane has such a great performance. Okay, yes, these might be the most strongest engines ever made. But look at this immense power. We've already reached a mark. Now, let's probably see how this plane performs at high altitudes. We're now at 60,000 feet. Let's trim it out nicely while the autopilot turns on, which actually works. Look at that. Autopilot 1, autopilot 2. Does that work? Yes. All right. Come on. Hold the altitude nicely. Oh. I've over -geed the air. Oh, sorry about that. That just kind of happened. See, what this flight simulator does not really simulate is the problem of such a huge airplane flying so fast in terms of its structural integrity. Yes, of course, we all know how flying so fast puts an immense stress on the fuselage, on the airplane. Just the immense heat that builds up when an airspeed of 420 knots of wind hits the, against the airplane. Right now, we're, by the way, flying Mach 2. So, yes, this airplane is able to fly as fast as the small Concorde. So, maybe try to turn off the afterburner. And that's something the real Concorde did as well. Let's maybe see... Uh, okay, never mind. Plane is still able to uh, be ma maintain speed. You can see that. Even with the afterburners off, so that's actually pretty good news. Yes, engine performance-wise, speed-wise, this has gone great. Great to the fact that my computer doesn't even load in the scenery properly. <laughs> so yeah, we would have to find good material to build this airplane. Maybe not out of plastic. And these new big Olympus engines definitely would have to be very loud. So noise regulation, that might be a problem. All right, but it's time now to test an exciting bit. And that is landing this airplane. Like the landing gear down. Yes, the doors are already open. That's not gone well, but take a look at the snoot droop, double the size, double the engines, motors. Anyway, it's interesting to see this airplane still flies as agile as the small Concorde to the point where I even kind of doubt the flight model being correctly set up. Like this airplane, look, look, it, it's, it flies so well. Maybe it is still because of the fighter jet delta wing design and its huge control surfaces that this plane does have. I mean, the wing is made of just control surfaces. So this airplane flies still as nimble as agile as ever. It's very nice to fly now. Anyway, come on, let's take a look here. We're able to fly at super slow speeds. That might be because of our immensely huge wing now. Ten. Come on, that wasn't hard. Yes, let's go ahead and stop this airplane now, full on into the reverse thrust. Beautiful. Very good. And we're able to stop extremely quickly. That is good. Of course, bigger wheels means bigger brakes and bigger reverse thrust as well. And our, and okay, our brakes are on fire. Never mind. Uh, yeah, I went in for full braking. That probably isn't the best idea sometime. All right, maybe the flight model isn't very trustable. Uh, let's maybe see if we can land the literally biggest airplane in the world at St. Bartholomew Airport down there. 150. I've crashed. I've crashed. Full. 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 I've crashed. I've crashed, but it's fine. This plane's just way too big, but I don't think stopping will be an issue. We can stop in a jiffy. Look at this. All right, we might have lost a 
little piece of that landing gear. Um, but we stopped. We actually managed to do it. So that's actually good news. So everybody, yeah, there you go. Um, we've made the Concorde bigger and proven that it kind of is able to fly, at least on paper. If you were to build it in real life, though, would it fall apart? Probably yes. Which is why the upcoming Boom Over Chore airplane isn't very big at all either. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.